Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. That guitar is sounding absolutely righteous. Yeah, it sort of seems fitting that the first time we hear uh, such a relatively traditional guitar is with a crazy modern sound in a show about MIDI. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're going to give you a, an introduction to MIDI today. We've been asked for this, we have succumbed, and we're going to give it a go. Yep. We've got some new toys to play with as well, so if we look a bit sharper, it's because we're experimenting like idiots with 4K. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Uh, we've also got some better vocal mics, so if the, uh, we'll see if the, the, the voice sounds any better, but just to help our next door neighbours are banging away, so we should be able to hear that in awesome. awesome clarity. Of course, we are drowning them with noise as well, so we're still on the hunt to move. It's still in the uh, pipeline. We're seeing somewhere tomorrow. Yeah, we are actually, so fin fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Okay, so the amp we're using today is the Marshall 19-something <laughs> X. 87. 1987X. 50 watt plexi. And the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Not bad. All right? Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, to be fair. There you go. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, Dan and I went out last night, and um, we ate enough meat to feed oh, an army. So good. There's a Brazilian restaurant in oh, Swindon. Oh, man. And you have this little thing, and you if, if you want more meat, you, it's green, and if you want no more meat, it's red. And they'll just keep feeding you meat until... Until you go red. So then if you kind can of... Just have uh, today, it might, that might be the reason. <sighs> and so I think I have one glass of wine too many as well, so... Yay! Uh, I'm, re I'm really in the mood for midi. <laughs> so, what I wanted to have a look at um, is just briefly touch on the uses of midi. Can I ask some questions? You can ask some questions. I think... Because I don't know anything about MIDI at all, right. I'm going to play the, uh, the I don't know anything about MIDI role for this video, which I maybe if uh, a lot of you watching will be in the same boat. Because if you know loads about MIDI, you probably won't need to watch this. Fair yeah, assumption? Fair assumption. So, what is MIDI and where do I find it in the guitar world? We're going to ask that question. Why do I need it and what do I need to make it work? And what are a couple of practical examples? Okay. I reckon if we can get through that yep. in amongst the other genius knowledge you're going to bestow upon us, um, I think we'll have done our job. What's MIDI, Dan? Okay. Uh, so MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Not M1D1. Not M1D1. <laughs> uh, or my die. <laughs> <laughs> so MIDI's been around for a long time. And it was a, um, a digital language that is used to control, you know, anything with digital with a MIDI interface. Um, the idea is that you can store sounds as a preset, and then change those stored sounds at will, or you can have access to the individual controls in those sounds. Yeah, a lot, MIDI. I think a lot of people's first encounter with MIDI would have been through MIDI keyboards and MIDI right. control messages mm -hmm. for... Um, because it, I think, wasn't it originally invented to transmit things like information relating to pitch, velocity, yeah, that's all in time. There. Yeah. So you could, for example, um, it, you would use it to trigger sounds in a sampler. Yeah. Yeah, and so all of that information can be, you know, done through MIDI. Um, you've got, um, you know, like you can control the length of the note and the, you know, the the, bright, the pitch and all that stuff. It's that's all in MIDI. As far as guitar players are concerned, a basic understanding of PCM, which is uh, Program Change Messages or Patch Change Messages. CC, which is control change messages, and... Are you going to explain the difference between those? I am, yep. I am. And finally, um, MIDI clock, right? An understanding of those three will, will hold you in good stead. Right, so, first thing, PCM or program change messages. With MIDI, um, so... Let's have a look at the timeline. The timeline has 
a number of banks. I can bank up and bank down. And then within those banks, you've got presets A and B. Now, those presets are where you store the sounds. Yeah, and you okay. can have how many? Like hundreds. Hundreds. So yeah. for your different delay sounds, they're all in there. They're all in there, exactly. And uh, so for example, on under this preset here, if I hit this, it goes to this thing that's called emerging, which is like a swell delay. So what's happened there is, as I press this button, G2 is sending out a program change message to the timeline to say, I want to recall preset you know, 130. And if you didn't have G2, the way you would do that is you would select it off the top panel. Yes, absolutely. So normally... But there might be, what, five banks up, one, two, three, four, five, select six foot presses. That's right. That's okay. right. So with, with a MIDI uh, controller that sends out, it's basically a MIDI, and a MIDI controller, a foot switch that has buttons that sends out program change messages. Yep. Okay. So with any MIDI controller plugged into the timeline, I can recall the presets that I want. So I can remember the, the, the first MIDI controllers I can remember were by people like um, ART, a ADA, ADA, which was just this huge, great, kind of spaceship looking thing actually not that much <laughs> dissimilar from from g2 but with less functionality and you would it would learn and it would program that's what i remember a midi controller being right but now they can be in order to control midi they can be any number of different devices ah it's 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 huge right but as it as it just so just to hammer the point home it just so happens that g2 does midi as well so that's how we are changing our midi that's today. right that's right um so it's and it's just sending out a really simple patch change message so rewind. That was patch change. That's a that's not CC. That's, that's not CC. PCM. 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 Okay. Patch change message, or some people call it program change message. Yep. Okay. Now, why is you know what's the point? Why wouldn't I just select the presets on? Ooh, ooh. I know this. Right. Obviously, you've got you've got six foot presses to get to the next preset. Yeah. Plus, you might want to change four other pedals at the same time. Exactly. Exactly and do some more complex stuff, which I'm sure you're going to explain. Exactly. So what I can do is then, with the MIDI going in, um, so the MIDI is connected through these four pedals, is then I can start to program sounds that incorporate not just the timeline, but the timeline and, and these other pedals. And just to make a really obvious point, which may be helpful to some of you at this point, you need a pedal that does MIDI. So if you've got a tube screamer, for example, I know that's a really ridiculously no, no, it's simple thing to say, yeah. but if you have a single sound pedal, you don't need MIDI because it's on or off. Those exactly. are the only two things it exactly. can do. But if you have a multiple sound pedal that can handle MIDI, obviously there's, in the case of the timeline warp vinyl, I mean, and the H9, there's limitless number of things you can change. Yeah, exactly. So for example, if I go here. If I press six, it's sending out a program, uh, a program change message to both the timeline and the H9. So now they're on together, and it's, it's one set up with a delay, and one set up with the, sorry, the delay is obviously on the timeline, and you've got this ramping tremolo on the H9. So in that way, I've been able to, to sort of pre-program the sounds I want so that when I hit that one foot switch and turns both those pedals on, and that's the sound. How does G2 know, or how does any MIDI switcher know that you want to go to that particular preset? So you set your, you set your two sounds up there. Mm -hmm. How do you then go, OK, MIDI controller, when I press this button, change those two things? Every MIDI controller is different. G2 is very simple. Um, G2, the, um, so basically, the PCM message, um, and some mini controllers, you can change that PCM message. Uh, in G2, the PCM, the PCM numbers are set, and then you map the sounds within the pedals. 
The simplest way to explain it, if I press number seven, it's sending out the PCM message that is um, attached to number seven, right, right? To, the, to the timeline. Then I simply change the sound to what I want, sort of, um, you know, program the sound into what, so let's say I want a reverse delay. Okay, now if I press save, and then save it to that preset, now if I go away from that, you'll see that the preset's changing here. I go yep. back to seven, it goes back to that reverse there it sound. Is. So there's, there's some, there's sky hooks and mirrors and magnets saying learn this and remember it. It's so, it, it's when it, um, when it receives that PCM message. It knows. It says, okay, now I'm at this PCM message. Whatever sound I'm, I, I'm going to create here, I'm going to store under that number, under that message. Yeah, when it gives me this message. So when, whenever I receive that message, yep. I'm going to bring that sound back up. Yep, okay? and, and just to be clear, in G2, each of those, each of your um, 14 presets off, off a single uh, bank there, mm -hmm. they will send a different... Or send a different number. Which the timeline recognizes. Exactly. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's a code. It's a, exactly. It's saying, fish, go to, <laughs> go to preset six. Yeah. Now, the other important thing with PCM, with program change messages, um, or what, well, with MIDI in general, is that you can select a different channel for that MIDI. All right, so now what does that mean? If I was sending out MIDI on just channel one, and all of these pedals are receiving MIDI on, on just channel one. What that would mean is, um, every time I hit a button, I hit a foot switch, yep. all those pedals would all be receiving a patch change message, yep. right? And that would all change. Right. Right? What I can do is I can give each pedal its own MIDI channel. Right. Right? For example, I've set up the timeline on MIDI channel two, right, and the H9 on MIDI channel three, right. Now I can send out multiple channels at once, and you know most most MIDI foot switches, uh, MIDI um, controllers can send out on multiple channels at once. And what that means is, I can have a preset where I'm going to, you know, I've got three pedals on. And it's it's sort of changing as if by magic, you know, from a But now because I've got the H9 on a different channel, yep, yep, if yep, I yep, include yep. the H9 in with that sound, it's not going to change the sound of the other ones. because the H9 is receiving on a different channel. How do you tell it to receive on a different channel? So in the MIDI utilities, right. in the pedal, so you say, you set, I say, I say, I want, yeah. I want this to receive on channel three. <sighs> all right. How, I can, I... As, all you need to know is that you can have the pedal receiving on its own MIDI channel. Right. All right. Now what, what that gives you, um, if you want all the pedals receiving on the same channel, that's fine. What that means is you're going to have presets, and it's just going to change those presets for, for every chat for every um, yeah. every time you press a button, a preset will change, right? But sometimes what we want, um, like the timeline, I might only have three delay sounds I need. Yeah. Right. So what I will do is I will put the timeline in, in its own MIDI channel and set up three buttons here so that I can kick those three delays that I want on at any time. When, you, when you're when you in your MIDI utilities menu and you're telling your MIDI controller which channel to, are you telling the pedal what to listen to, uh, what to respond to, or are you telling the controller what to send? No, you're telling the, the pedal what to listen to. Okay. Right, you're, you're saying, I'm now receiving MIDI on channel two. Right. Right. Um, so, so then, how, so it will ignore everything else that comes on channel one, channel five, channel you know, 
uh, any other channel. Basically, you can have it up to like 15 channels, I think. So my next question then is, if you hit number seven, for example, yep. on your MIDI controller, yep. how does seven know to send one and two? So that, and that's where you program the MIDI controller. Right. Right. Um, so what I would, the way G2 works is, if I hold down seven, press the phase button, you go into MIDI edit mode. So if I press, say, 12, for example, at the moment it's transmitting on MIDI channel one. Right. I can say I want it to MIDI, transmit on MIDI channel um, one and three. And let's so say 13, I want it to transmit on only MIDI channel two. And then come out back to exit. Now, when I press 12, you'll see that these two are on MIDI channel one, this is on MIDI channel three. They will change, right? But when I press 13, you'll see that sh these all stay the same and the timeline will change. That's clever. And it's, 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 it's fairly standard, but the, what, what that gives you is that added flexibility yeah. so that, because there are parameters in each pedal that you want, you know, you want access to. And there's the presets that sometimes yeah. I want it to be a part of a preset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, for example, down here, I've got them, I've got all sure. MIDI channel one, two and three on, they'll, they'll all change. But now here, when I press the timeline, just the timeline's gonna change. Yeah. So to, to, to uh, oversimplify that again, when you set your MIDI up on um, your MIDI controller, yep. you're going, when I select preset six, yep. I want the warp vinyl, the timeline, and the, and the H9 to change. Yes. But when I press seven, I only want the Kismet to change. Yes. Great. So, so, right, understood, understood. Yep. And there is a separate menu and programming function within your MIDI controller to do that. Exactly. Right, exactly. happy days, right. happy days. So. It seems appropriate that we're wearing uh, 1958 reissue t-shirts today, Daniel. Uh, new in the That Pedal Show store, by the way. Uh, just to bring us right up to date here. <laughs> So I'm sorry for being dim, but it, it, I've never used it, and it confuses the crap out of me. Right. I need to play some blues just play to some, uh, yeah, yeah. keep yourself happy a bit. It's okay. I'm happy now. Now, what you just did then was you, when you hit preset three, you yep. turned on the kismet which is a distortion pedal. New, by the way. New, by the way, uh, yes. Have you got the, could you pass me the manual? I could do. Um, this is from Ramble FX. Thank you for sending that in. And it was perfect timing. It turned up today and it is a MIDI controllable overdrive distortion pedal. Yes. Which now, is unusual. It is unusual. Stone Death so, do them. Yeah. Uh, who else? Chase Bliss else? Audio. Chase Bliss. It's not normal. Uh, yeah, the the analog drive. But anyway. Yeah, by Alexa. So the, the reason we, I wanted to mention that was, we, on the board we've got the Warp Vinyl and the Kismet, which are both analog effects pedals with digital, digital control. control. I mean, that's Chase Bliss's whole thing, isn't it? Yeah, Chase Bliss's Analog whole heart, thing. digital brain right. is their strap line, exactly. I believe. Now, because these pedals are, uh, are now becoming really popular, the whole the whole idea of having digitally controlled analog. Yeah. The MIDI thing is becoming more relevant. Right. Right. So, for example, the the, the warped vinyl. You know, if when well, you look at that, you think, well, it's a, it's an amazing looking pedal, but it doesn't. It's not obviously. You know, digitally controlled, uh, available to do presets by MIDI. Well, for a start, there's no MIDI uh, thingy on it. Aha! That's five a, pins. Yeah, so well done. Job. So interestingly, um, the MIDI that we mostly recognise is that is the five pin DIN plug yep, MIDI. I'm gonna, Simon's going to zoom in on this, I think, and I'll show you what that looks like. Because I just saw a picture of one in this here manual. Oh my goodness, this is going to take forever. I don't, know if, I don't know if you'll be able to get in on this. Yeah, so what you can see there is a... A, a five pin DIN connector. Yeah, one yeah. end is the female five pinned in and the other end is, excitingly, is the TRS connector. Right, so how does that work? MIDI, to, to transmit MIDI signals, you don't need all five pins. You only need three, right? So if you're looking at a five pin connector, it's the, it's the 
center three. Yeah. So instead of putting a DIN, a five pin DIN connector on those what do you pedals. Other, what do the other two do? Power and something else? Well, you can, yeah, you, you can have them for, for power. Right. Um, but generally, okay. generally really the only, only that center three are used. So what a number of people are doing now, Chase Bliss are using a TRS connector, um, tip, ring and screen, right? Like a stereo quarter inch jack to transmit the MIDI on. The Kismet from the, the Ramble Effects uses a mini jack, right? So it's two. Oh, but it's a mini TRS. It's a mini TRS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's how they're receiving their, their MIDI. So what, yes, you do need a converter that converts, because, you know, the standard is with the five pin DINs, um, this little Chase Bliss Audio converter does convert the standard MIDI to a TRS. But all it's really doing is, is connecting those three pins yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to a TRS cable. Right, so here's why this is really cool. If I go to a sound on the warped vinyl, um, let's find a really nice... Lovely. So that's the sound I want whenever I hit this foot switch. Okay? To store that sound, what I do is I press both foot switches at the same time. And this will depend on different pedals. Different pedals have different saving functions, but this is how you do it on this one. This is how you do it on this one. And whatever, whatever foot switch I press, it's going to store that sound. So if I go to... Um, Back to preset number one. The they're very similar. So let me. It <laughs> was always going to happen. <laughs> just... It is Friday the thirteenth. We're recording on Friday the thirteenth today. So not only have we got some new cameras and new microphones, we're also doing MIDI. We thought bring it on. Let's do this. And this, while he's doing that, I'll tell you, is a Collings i30LC, which is, I think, the first one in the UK with the aged finish. Uh, I'm very chummy with the uh, lovely people at Collings, so they sent this to us to try, and what a spectacular thing it is. It's, it's beyond beautiful. Yeah, it's all hollow, laminate construction, based on a, like a Gibson 330 or Epiphone Casino, but with a smaller body in the uh, Collings style and it is spectacular you'll be hearing more of it over the coming weeks or as long as we can hold on to it <laughs> mm. anyway sorry interlude. okay so here's out the, the, the standard sound if i hit number two and bring on the warped vinyl So what's happening there is the pots, uh, are, the pots are digital. All the circuitry is analog, but where you would normally have a pot changing the resistance of the you know, in the circuit to, to make those changes, well the pot is digital, and it's remembering those resistance changes. Yep. And storing those as presets. Yeah. So the signal path is completely analog. It's completely. But the analog. control is digital to exactly. hammer that point. So. Uh, <laughs> Which begs the question, why don't you just buy a Digitech RP100 and get away with from all this silliness? Ah, oh, man. Well, look. If the Digitech RP100 still exists, you know, Boss yeah, GT10 yeah. or whatever. You know, any programmable multi-effects. That's a, And it's a great question. And the answer is because, I mean, that warped vinyl sounds astonishing. Yeah, because it's, it's analog sounds. It's exactly, you know, the... Um, yeah, and th th that's what I love about this. And same thing with the Kismet. If we, if we, um, I thought that was sounding very nice, actually. The we, Kismet. Yeah, I mean, we, Kismet sounds amazing. We we've plugged it on there today to um, just talk about MIDI, and I haven't actually listened to what it sounds like. But. So, if we. Um, Thank 
When Dan started playing, I was looking at the top going, hang on a minute, it was giving much more gain than that earlier. And then of course, because it was in a preset mode, it had remembered what he was saying about digital pots. Mm -hmm. So you, a bit like uh, on a lot of digital multi-effects, you turn the pot and it comes alive exactly. and it starts doing the thing. And this here uh, red LED lights up to tell you you're in live setting mode, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Yeah, so as soon as the pedal res um, receives a, a, a movement of the pot, it will, it, it says okay we're programming now it goes yeah. back to the to the live pedal settings but you, you know so you can so imagine this you've got this great sounding overdrive pedal i can say okay for this sound i want a nice just just breaking up a little bit yeah so let's let's program this in so if you want to just have some shame Be a bit louder than that. Like of that. So with the Kismet, what I do is I over to the left, and then I press the number that I want it to receive the MIDI on, and that's it. And that's it. That's it. So let's, let's program another sound. Yeah. So this is our the sound we have at the moment. Let's do uh, something with a bit more gain. Liking that? Yep. So. I'm too confused to like anything at the moment. It's not that hard, Mark. <laughs> right, so, we go back to the first sound. Like So you can then change the, you know, change the EQ, change the gain. So from one pedal, from one analog overdrive pedal, you've managed to get, you, you're sort of breaking up sounds all the way through to your, your high gain solo sounds. Not to mention adding on all your other stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Per single pre. Exactly, pre exactly. So with these four pedals, I've got analog overdrive, analog modulation, I've got, um, you know, the digital delay, but, and, and the, you know, digital everything and the H9. Yeah. But with those four pedals, I can program up the craziest number of sounds. Yeah, li I mean, almost endless. Exactly. From four pedals. In fact, probably infinite. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so that is the basis of program change messages. Yep. We could. Telling your multi-sound pedals to change their sound exactly. without having to... It's kind of extent... It's an extension of what G2 does, isn't it? Because if you've got single sound pedals, you program in changes on all the pedals and it changes. But yep. what then if that pedal has 58 sounds in it and you... Yeah. Exactly. So, and it's giving again, you access to all those sounds. Again, I'm sorry for if that's just too obvious, but I think it bears repeating. Yes. For me. Yeah. Okay. Now we get on to CC messages, right? CC stands for continuous control. Um, so what you can do is with the CC messages, you can access the individual knobs inside the pedal. Yep. All right. So for example, um, under this sound here, I believe, 
I've got it set up so that the the source audio controller here yep. is now accessing the effect. So on, there's a a um, sort of a hall effect on this one here. Want to hear it? Uh, yeah, go on then. With the, with the one pedal, I'm accessing the effect level of the H9, but I'm also accessing the repeats on the timeline. When you so push the pedal when down. When you push the pedal down, it's going to increase the reverb and increase the amount of repeats. So if you just hit, the, hit a chord, single repeat. Now if you push that forward you'll and play a chord, the repeats will go on and the reverb will lift. And you've got the um, repeats so that they'll self-oscillate because it's yeah. just getting more and more and more. Yeah. Okay, so that, I mean... That's... Now, the great thing with that is within, uh, so the source audio, I'm sending that on two different channels. I'm sending out two different CC messages. I can change the taper of that with the, the way that the foot switch, the, the, the pedal tapers, whether it's... Um, Linear. So the source audio is a separate MIDI controller. The source audio is a separate MIDI controller. So you'll see here. But it's not like it's not arguing with the other MIDI controller. It's like you. Not at all. It's, it, it becomes part of it. The source audio. If you look at the screen, as I go through the presets, oh, you'll God, see the screen as you'll well. see the presets change. Yeah. So I can change per sound. I can change what that pedal is doing. Right. Yeah, we looked at this before. Didn't so we? yeah. So on one sound, I can have it doing exactly what we just did then, changing the, the reverb and delay. On one sound, I can have it changing the pitch. I can have it changing the the tone, the the, the gain level. So I can have the you know when I have a drive sound, I can use that to increase the gain. Sure. But also decrease the volume. <laughs> so you know. So yeah. it's CC messages are amazing. If, you, if that level of changing stuff is spinning your Swede at this point, the, the simplest um, example of a continuous control message is a volume pedal. Yeah. Which isn't a continuous control message because it's happening in the analog world. Yeah. But it's an example of something that you can change by pushing up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, when I first started messing around with the volume pedals, I found them th they're so expressive uh, just by changing that one parameter. Well, this gives you access to every, every yeah. parameter. Delay you know? time, delay level, modulation. It's all there. Yep. Depth, speed, all the things that you would be able to... I know you've already said this, I'm just going to keep saying it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there are things, like for example, in the timeline, um, one of the issues I've always had is that you cannot... with the ex There's an expression pedal input, right? Yeah. Um, so the expression pedal is different from CC messages. The expression pedal gives you um, sort of easy access over... Um, you know, you can set the, uh, yep. the expression pedal to do whatever. But things in the timeline, like so... The looper, for example, you can't change the volume of the looper with the expression pedal, but you can through a CC message. Right. So, um, like, we have this, um, there's a Tin Spirit song called Garden State, where I set up this loop at the end and solo over the end of it, but I've got to bring the loop down towards the end of the song. And I, there was no other way to do that except through that expression pedal. And it's it works perfectly. It is a worthy... It's a worthy point to reflect on that for a second because all of this stuff can seem entirely academic mm -hmm. until you've got a use for it. Yeah. Because that's the point, isn't it? Absolutely. If you're, you know, doing what most of us do, playing at home, getting some cool sounds up, you know, and that's, that's what you do most of your life, this, you don't need this. Yeah. However, if you're having to call up you're playing a set of songs and you really need to call up those correct sounds night after night mm -hmm. and you need the control over them. This is the only way to do it, isn't it? Unless you've got some sort of programmable multi-effects yeah. thing. Absolutely. Um, or 58 foot presses. Yeah. Or someone, you know. But even, you know, the thing with the the uh, the CC messages 
is this works in conjunction with the program patch change messages so that when I go to that sound that I've programmed up in the pedals and within that sound now I have access over um, a single parameter or you know I think you can have like five different you know send out five different messages wow. from that so you can you know at once so it's very cool it's very cool you know you with a passive volume pad, you've got you know it's one thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, but being able to control multiple things at once. Yeah. With something that does CC messages like that is awesome. Bonkers. And you can set ah the other great thing about that is you can set the minimum and maximum number. So within the CC message, there's a number. Um, so for example, the the timeline. I think the the number for the effect level is CC message three, right? So if I go to CC message three, you have, within CC message three, you have a number zero to 127 that affects the level, yep. right? That affects basically the range of that pot. Yep. Within the CC controller, you can determine what is the minimum setting yep. and what is the maximum setting. So that when I heal down, you know, because I don't, I don't want my delay all the way off. Yeah, yeah. But I don't yeah. want it. If I don't want it to self oscillate, I'll set the point that I want the maximum delay setting, and then move between those two. Similarly, delay, delay times. I guess you know, if you wanted to go between a certain number of milliseconds and another, you're, you're not going. Oh, we're nearly there. You exactly. can just go bosh can, all the way to the front. Exactly. And, you can, and you know it's there. You can set that point yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. So that's it. That's see. That's. Uh, CC messages. CC messages. And, but CC messages can also be used for things like tap tempo. You know, you can have a CC controller with the foot switch simply set to hit that, you know, hit the tap tempo, which then affects whatever delay you've got going. So tempo is a good segue to the next. Tempo is a good segue to the next one. This is the, and the last one that I want to touch on is um, MIDI clock. Now, what MIDI clock does is it sends uh, a tempo signal through MIDI to the rest of the pedals. So anything that uses, um, you know, has a time-based thing Yeah, so it. for everyone who asked the question, I've got my delay and my tremolo and I can't ever get them in time, this is how you do it. Exactly. Right. So we had a sound before that had a tremolo and a delay. All right, so if you want to play, I think it was this one. So, this is our delay. So I'm just laughing because the sounds are so odd, oddly fantastic. Right, yeah. there's a delay. Single repeat delay. So let's let's um just do that again for us. Okay, I'm gonna make it increase the repeats. Now, what I can do is I can change the timing of that tremolo with this tap control. So play again for us. Or, or faster. Now, my kind of tempo. If you watch this though, Watch what happens with the LED. What I've done is I've connected the MIDI clock from the H9 through to the timeline. Uh, don't show me in detail, but how do you do that? All right. It's just by turning on the MIDI clock send in the H9. So the H9 It's Friday the 13th. Got... We've got new cameras, new microphones. We're talking about MIDI, and now he's got his phone out. Check it out. So the H9 has got this incredible app 
that says device not found. <laughs> it was it was written in the scriptures. Connected. Yeah, there just needed go. to reconnect. There we go. So. Five G is going to change all this, you know. Is it? Yeah, I was talking to my brother-in-law about this. Everyone thinks five G is going to be really good for phone signal. It's actually not great for phone signal because it works on a different wavelength or something. But right. it's going to be really great for interconnectivity <clears throat> of things. Oh, really? Apparently so. Ah, right. Okay. So, <clears throat> what I what I do um, in the H nine, for example, if I go into pedal, and here we've got MIDI settings. And it's all in there. It's, I mean, it's really simple. Um, so I've turned, basically turned the MIDI clock on, so it's going to send out that MIDI clock signal. Yeah. Now, and you, you, uh, do you have to tell the timeline to look out for it, or uh, or does it just do it? it yeah, it it does it. Yeah, it does it. So basically, what happens now is if I, if I change the tap on this, you'll see that the tap. In, increases the speed on the timeline. And does that work one way? So if you change the tap on the timeline? No, the timeline doesn't send the MIDI clock. Right. Right. So some pedals do it, some pedals don't. Yep. The H9 sends it and the timeline will receive it. Now here's what's cool. If we have the, if I turn off the H9 now, but I use that to tap the tempo in of the, of the timeline, okay. we get this. Cool. Yeah. Now check this out. What I can do, if I go into this sound, and I change the tap divisions from quarter note to a dotted eighth note. Oh, get on. Right. Now, when I bring in the tremolo, the delay will be in dotted eighth, but the tremolo will be in in uh, eighth notes. So yep. check this out. So that's what MIDI clock does. It's the uh, it sends out that pulse, which is recognised by the timeline and anything else that you know. And the timeline clock, can further change yeah, it by it, turning it in from a quarter note to a dotted eighth. Exactly. Wow. And you know you can set up um, you know within presets um, you can set up the MIDI clock. So for example. I can set up the MIDI clock time on the H9 per preset, which is going to send that pulse out to you know anything else. Um, so if you've got specific songs that have a specific delay time, yeah. you set that up in there. Yeah, or, or tr tremolo is a great one for that because you know if you're doing a song that's got a really heavily tremoloed part and your drummer takes the tempo off it, it's got to be on. Depending on how many beers you've had that night, exactly, you're going to be off mm. by a good a number of BPM to really upset everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's just there. That's clever. I mean, I know you can do that on digital control pedals anyway, but to have it all change and all be in sync 
So not only are you five beats a minute quicker when you're <laughs> you've set your tremolo up, or you've you know you have you've turned the knob properly, and then your delay's out of time. Yeah. Because maybe you're digital. So yeah, sorry, I'm laboring the point. Here, no, no, but it's but it's great. You know, there are some some songs and some sounds you don't want everything in time, but there are things that having that rhythmical sure. thing is 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 awesome. Um. You know, and, and what I love about this, I mean, as I said before, MIDI's been around for a long time. Um, but seeing all this, these amazing new pedals being able to link together with this, you know, this old information technology and, and get sounds like this is, is awesome. So why don't, we, why don't we create a few presets? Yeah. Right? So a, a, an example would be, let's go from, yeah, cre create four things just yep. as a kind of hammering the point home, blimey, look what you can do. Right. Okay. Okay, so after a lot of messing about, and blimey, we could mess about for days, what have you, what have you programmed in then? Right, so the first sound yep. has got a, a, a little bit of nice bright modulation, but with the, a, a really cool um, sort of spanky reverb underneath the um, expression pedal. Okay. <laughs> Two is uh, just a really nice overdrive and delay. So it's a, it's a tremolo delay, so cool. Yeah. Right here we have uh, really full-on modulation um, with a bit more dirt and a, uh, sorry, really full-on modulation. Not a lot of dirt, but this really great sort of mild flange from the H9. <laughs> I think you better play us out, mate. <laughs> Everyone's going, please let Dan play!
Four pedals there. There's no way in the world you get that dynamic range out of a digital thing. No, no way no, in a million no. years you that, get you get that. No way in a million yeah. years. That is some really um, spectacular sounds. Kind of abstract because we weren't really going for anything. No, it's but, just you know. The, the reality is, I could take those four pedals. Yeah, right. And there's not a lot that you can't do with that. Yeah, you know. Good show for the Kismet. So the others are well proven, well loved, mm. very well known. Good show for the Kismet to come in and stand up alongside all of that stuff. Awesome. One more quick thing I'll show you. If you want to have a play, um, one thing that the new technology can do with MIDI is that I can actually be away from the board and with an app on the phone. Oh, that, uh, okay, right. So this, wh what is this controlling? So, I can, there's a little um, MIDI Bluetooth thing in the back here. Yeah. So I can now actually control from the phone. Ooh. I can actually do presets. Yeah. So, have a play. Imagine that um, you've got a tech stood out the back. Imagine you've got Imagine a tech. tech. And you, you go down the front for your big glory solo and he just he changes the presets for you on the phone. Or she. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, another little um, oh. modern technology hooking up with... Just one more thing to go wrong is my dad would say. I am totally in love with the whole analog digital control thing. Yep. And you can just get a taste of the possibilities. I can see, I can like totally see how that works for you because Man. your brain can deal with it. Mine literally never will as long as I live. And, and so this is the thing. You need to be ready to stuff around with it yep. because it takes a long time. Every one of these pedals has a different way of programming the MIDI, yep. you know, so you've got to be, you know, you've got to be ready to spend some time with it. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, said this a few times in this video I'll say it again you know if you're playing a set bunch of tunes night after night after night what a, what a god awesome. awesome yeah, yeah. excellent guys thank you so much I really hope you enjoyed that uh, I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon um, we've had a had a situation this week we thought we could give some stuff away turns out we can't it's turns illegal. out it's highly illegal you can't give stuff away yeah so um, we're going to find another way to do it yeah but yeah thank you guys I want to say a massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford, Surrey. In the USA is... Uh, Rift City Music uh, of New Hope, Minnesota. Yes, and in Australia. Uh, is Pedal Empire of Queensland, Brisbane, Brisbane, Queensland. And check out our new fancy, oh, fancy... Oh, yeah, yeah. Vintage reissue t-shirts. If we'd existed in 1958, this is what our logo would have looked like. Honest. It's so cool. Yeah. It's so cool. And in time, there'll be uh, 1969, 1977, 1986, which is all guys, good fun. It's just brilliant. It's all good fun. Brilliant, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Cheerio. Cheers, guys. Bye.